trying to figure out where we've been and where we're going. How many miles, Mike? 21. 21. 21. We've gone 3,080 miles up to this point, 120 to go. So it'll be about 3,200 miles. We average about three and a half miles an hour, and it's 60 strokes a minute. And we've covered a little over 3,200 miles, so it was 3,256,000 paddle strokes to get where we're going. The route is a circumnavigation of New England via the Canadian Maritimes. I don't think it was anyone's intention to be the first to do it. It was just, hey, this is a fun adventure. Let's just keep it going. We literally did this a week, a year, across 32 years. I think we were all in our mid-20s, early 20s, when we started doing these trips. We've all, in many respects, grown up together. One thing a little convoluted about this whole adventure is that we were going to New York City, but we went that way to get to New York City, and unfortunately, New York's that way. So 3,200 miles, literally that direction, and up around to end up down there 300 miles from here. So it's really cool to think that, you know, we started here, we ended up in New York City, but we went the wrong direction over 32 years. <laughs> and that's a typical Mike Perry trip. <laughs> Well, so the four of us all grew up as outdoorsmen, but came from different lenses, if you will. We had started out as skiers and mountaineers and whitewater a little bit, but the ocean was new to all of us. Tom had a boat and asked me if I would be interested in, in paddling. We paddled a shoreline that I grew up on. I saw more of that coastline in three-hour afternoon than I'd seen in a childhood. You know, individually, we'd done most of the main coastline. But then you thought, well, we've done all the main coast now. It would be fun to see the New England coastline. I was like, golly, we don't want to stand. So, you know, in the wintertime, you know, looking at the maps like this, thinking, well, it'd be really cool to explore Minas Basin and the Bay of Fundy, highest tides on the earth. It had to be Mike's idea because he loves to circumnavigate things. He figured out a route where we could go coast of Maine, Bay of Fundy, Nova Scotia, Cape Breton, Gas Bay, up the St. Lawrence. We go down the St. Lawrence River, and I wonder if you can get from Montreal to Lake Champlain. So we looked into it, and there's a canal system. Down Lake Champlain into another canal system that goes to the Hudson River, and then the Hudson River back down to the Statue of Liberty. Very deliberate, a week at a time, because we were young families, like I said, and no, no one had that flexibility with work. You wouldn't want to take a month off and, oh, there's, sorry, dear, that's two years worth of vacation. I'm sure I speak for uh, the rest of the guys too, but when you've got a young family, you miss them. And even if it's only a week, you're out there, you're, you're thinking of them. 30 miles today? 31 miles. 31 today. miles. Yeah. 31 miles Round today. Up. But it's been weather like this. Following breeze, pretty nice. So we're sauteing oh. a little butter. I've cut, some... cut, cut, Charlie, you're oh, supposed oh, to make oh, this oh, sound oh. like it's a hard trip. <laughs> it was unbelievable out there. There were waves this high. It was dangerous out there. This yeah. is not for just anybody to do. Well, I got to tell you that when we get home, our wives should feel sorry for <laughs> us. There are a lot of people who go on these outdoor trips and they, they're kind of looking for a story. They're looking for some drama. We're not in to be heroes. We're not in to conquer the elements. We're there to visit a stretch of coast and spend time together. We've had moments where it's just like, what are we doing out here? I mean, this is crazy. You know, we're wet, we're cold, we're hungry, the bugs are biting, the campsite sucks. 
You know, there's nothing enjoyable about this moment. These guys whipped out and didn't want to paddle today. Must be getting old or something. You know, if we can't find anything good out of the situation we're in, we find the good amongst each other. Ooh, look at this. This is beautiful. Beautiful coast. Now that looks like the main coast, doesn't it? Sure does. <laughs> Want to go around the ledge or inside? And we're going to split them. Split them. OK. There's some stuff in there, but just don't hit it. My sage advice. We're guys, so we don't like, you know, start out with that or anything. But we definitely have our little moments where we come by and you go, how's this going? You know, and little chat. And you know you're going to get somebody that is going to listen and uh, be empathetic and not necessarily tell you what to do, but just listen and go, all right, yeah. And, and they can't paddle away. Yeah. Fast, <laughs> fast enough. <laughs> Have your swell bucket. Wow. I think it gives us all perspective in the rest of our lives. You gotta be flexible when you're on an outdoor trip because that's kind of how life is. Changes and you gotta flex with it, and sometimes you gotta just grind it out. This is humbling. It makes you feel so small as a person that we're not in control of this. And I think human beings need to realize that they're not in control. I, it's just extremely humbling to be outdoors. What's the longest crossing we've done? Was it Shalor Bay? I think it was. Miles. Like, was that 18? Yeah, sure. Remember, we did it because we had a tailwind. We figured we could save an hour because we had the small craft warnings all morning. Well, you're right. It did start out with a tailwind, but you know, we got halfway across. It was dead calm. Yeah. 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 Didn't we have a whale? Yeah, we had a humpback whale. Well, maybe it was dead calm where you were. We were a long ways ahead of you. It was quite rough. <laughs> John was keeping me company. Where is he? <laughs> I think I see a speck back there. You guys oh. had the tent set up. I think the. The stove going. I think dinner was served upon arrival. Right. We were just, just waiting night. for the chanter. But has ever been that square in my life? Oh God! <laughs> Never wanted to get out of a boat so bad. As you go along through the curve of life, it, it shifts to the camaraderie of great friends, and then it evolves to I want to take care of these special places and support organizations that do this so well. This whole thing's gonna blow my mind when I realize that 32 years has gone by. Because it's, it's been a flash. And it's so exciting that this ends it in one of the greatest cities in the world. You can be going to paradise, but it's not paradise unless you're with quality people. Close the loop here. Oh my gosh, we can't have that. I mean, this thing has an end to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, paddles up. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Good job, boys. of the Canadian Maritimes to Manhattan, you know, the contrast was, was very visible, very, very palatable. To be able to keep going and, and uh, go to totally different places with these guys is exciting. People often ask after the journey, what's got next? Well, we'll pour over those maps this winter. We'll come up with something. <laughs> the journey's not over, just the circumnavigation of New England. <laughs>